guys. Uh, so I'm up here today just kind of flying around. And um, one thing that my instructor did, like a primary training a long time ago, was simulated um, flight controls being jammed. And it was at a 152 is what I started in. And <laughs> he used the doors to turn the airplane, which I thought was really, really cool. Because I was kind of over controlling the airplane and was doing, a, you know, doing a lot of this. So um, he simulated that you know the flight controls are jammed. Now what you know what can you do? And he taught me you know fly the airplane with what you have. Now in the Cub, the reality of the elevator and the aileron getting jammed at the same time is really really slim. That being said, um, there was one time where I did feel like the elevator had gotten caught on something. It was a little stuck. Didn't really think much of it, uh, and then come to find out my annual, there was like a really large water bottle that I must have had in the front seat, or maybe it was in there for years, I don't know, and it basically slid back. Um, and you know, the back of the Cub is where all the uh, pulleys and cables are for the elevator, um, the other one not so much, but the point is, is that, you know, Murphy's Law exists, right, for a reason, so something can potentially go wrong. Uh, so it's also a good, good idea to kind of get familiar with, you know, just flying the airplane not using this stuff, because think about it, if you can fly the airplane or even land the airplane without using the elevator or aileron, just by using the rudder, um, throttle, and the trim, which is what I'll show you now, think about how, how well you can fly the airplane if you're just missing one of those things, right? Um, so I'll attempt to fly the airplane right now, hands off. Uh, I'm gonna go to Allen's, and if my flight controls are ever stuck, I'm not gonna go to a paved airport. I'm gonna go to an airport that has a grass strip, because uh, the landing probably won't be all that nice. You don't have to worry too much about center line, so on and so forth. Now the big thing, if this were to happen to you, is obviously you want to use the trim, use the throttle, use your feet. Uh, but this is the, one of the rare times for me where you want a really long, stable final. You obviously are not going to try to, you know, make a make a short approach. So I'm going to use the trim and the throttle and try to get this thing on the ground, more or less, uh, at Allen's. Again, this is really good practice, and it's actually kind of a lot of fun to kind of test yourself. Now, obviously, if it looks like you're going to crash the airplane or smash it in, <laughs> you just go ahead and use the use a stick. But stuff like this is kind of fun. Uh, it keeps flying fresh, and if you have a student that's maybe over-controlling, um, you know, just go out there and do this with it, because, again, it just kind of shows that the airplane is flying. Hands off right now, the airplane is flying fine by itself. If I want to go up, give myself full throttle, starts to pitch up if I want to go down. Just bring the throttle down, um, and this is just throttle, right? So I'm going to use the elevator or the uh, trim and my feet, and try to get this thing on the ground at Allen's. Uh, I'm going to land on uh, three one Allen's, which is over the trees. I'm not going to slip the airplane, obviously, but I'll see if I can get it on the ground. Um, all right, so here we go. I'm on like a really long right base, and the thing with um, with, you know, when you're doing this is if you have it stable, really, really small incremental changes to the throttle and the uh, trim. But if the airplane starts to get away from you, you gotta be a little bit more proactive than reactive and be really aggressive with the trim and or the throttle. Because once it gets away from you, it's, it's kind of hard to, to get it back. And I'm gonna start a really slow turn to base. I probably should have brought it out a little wider, but that's all right. Let's see if this works out. It's such a habit to just want to grab the controls, right? But um, I'll do my best. Another stellar morning. It's like 50 degrees this morning. I threw the preheater on for, for a couple minutes. Just kind of get the, the edge off. Just a little bit. Right, so I'm kind of slowly rolling out on final. And the nose starts coming down. Kind of be a lot easier if the trim was uh, on my right hand. So I got to keep. I guess I could. Eh, this should work out just all right. All right. So I'm on a final. I'm gonna. Try to keep the inputs to a minimum. Of 
course, there's a tiny bit of a crosswind. Phase zero one flight, buddy. So good. And again, if this was like a real situation, I would probably just accept the outcome here rather than, than go around. Because the last thing you want to do is, is go around. All right. I mean, not bad. But you can see how quickly I was with the throttle there. Um, that's kind of what you want to do, right? Just really be um, aggressive, be proactive, not reactive. Because in this airplane, if you're reactive, it's gonna, probably going to get away from you relatively easy. So I just wanted to show you guys that, uh, number one, because there's a chance that it could happen. I know it's not really likely, but, you know, it's an airplane. Shit happens, as they say. And the, the biggest thing is to kind of show you how little input you actually need. Um, let me get out of the sun here. How, how little input you actually need to fly the airplane. The airplane flies fine by itself. Uh, so a lot of fun. Go out there and try it. Uh, try with an instructor if you want, and don't let the airplane obviously smash on the ground. If it looks like it's not going to work out, just take control of the airplane. I can't believe I actually have to say that, and you guys probably think I'm an idiot. But um, So again, it's kind of just a lot of fun to do. Um, keep your skills sharp. Show you how well the airplane flies without constant you know, input. Uh, and again, the likelihood of this thing being jammed, as uh, both the aileron and the elevator is is close to zero. But imagine, I mean, your elevator uh, it could get stuck. And think about if just the elevator stuck. All right, no problem. I've landed the airplane with just a rudder, trim, and throttle, so not a big deal. Um, and if the ailerons are stuck, okay, no big deal. I can just use a rudder, uh, an elevator, and trim and throttle and all that stuff. So it's kind of just showing you that hey. Worst case scenario, um, if something does get jammed, the airplane is going to fly for the most part just fine. You can get it down on the ground and land it. Uh, but the bigger, the bigger point of view here, the, the bigger thing I want you to take away is just when you go out and fly, just go out and just kind of practice these things. It keeps your skills sharp. It's fun. It keeps it fresh. And um, I don't know. I'm a big proponent of stick and rudder flying, and this is something that you don't really see practice too much. And in the 152, like I said, it was really cool because you can use the doors to turn the airplane. This obviously, uh, I can't do that. Uh, I could probably stick my hand out, but I'm not going to work all that well. But that's all I got for you guys today. Just a quick video just showing you how much fun you can have by, uh, by doing stuff like this. All right, I'll see you later.